Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I'm Mark Anderson, the Director of Education at Domus Academy. I'm very pleased with your participation in the talk this evening, which is part of an open lecture series at Domus Academy entitled Disruptive Patterns. This series runs throughout the year, and we host inter Italian and international guests in talks, panels, discussions on di different contemporary issues revolving around the world of design. This evening, we're also very proud to open our, our digital doors of the school and participate in the Milan Digital Week in an occasion to contribute to an open discussion around and from within the digital realm. We have with us this evening a very special guest, Arturo Tedeschi, who has accepted our challenge to share and discuss some ideas uh, uh, with us uh, in a talk entitled New Paradigms Referencing the Present. Arturo uh, is a very special guest. Uh, uh, he's an architect, a computational designer, and works within uh, what can be considered an avant-garde segment of architecture and industrial design. Uh, he, and his works ranges from furniture, automotive, installations, products, footwear. He collaborated with many leading companies providing services, training, uh, training uh, related to algorithmic modeling, complex geometry, digital fabrication, and data-driven design. He's also collaborated with many institutions, universities, from, from Architectural Association of London, the Politecnico, UAV, University of Venezia, uh, and as well as collaborating with some of the, mo the most interesting and major architecture and design firms. Uh, I'm very happy to have him with us uh, because for me, he really represents a maverick in his approach toward the profession uh, where he integrates uh, advanced technology, obviously, uh, but also uh, research and teaching uh, and consulting in, in a seamless mix. Uh, it all flows through. So um, please uh, give a warm welcome to Arturo. And without more to do, I will pass, pass the word to him. Thank you, Arturo. Welcome. Thank you so much, Mark, for your introduction, for the invitation, of course. It's a great honor to me to be here with you today and with the audience. Um, I'm starting the... Okay. So once again, thank you uh, for the introduction and uh, for like uh, introducing my um, my activity in a like in a very easy way. Um, I, I would be uh, I wouldn't be like uh, um, that good in explaining what I'm doing in life actually. So actually, uh, my um, I'm a the director of AT, a Milan-based office, which provides, as you said, Mark, services related to algorithmic modeling and uh, complex geometry. But despite the technological, let's say, direction of AT, actually, my idea is to find uh, and uh, to find beauty through technology. So to me, it's always important to um, mix uh, a kind of research of uh, elegance and um, a kind of balance between uh, uh, different uh, approaches uh, through technologies. And uh, I'm also the um, uh, author of uh, AD Algorithm Said Design, which is one of the um, like reference book uh, worldwide for algorithmic modeling. Now, the word algorithm is very important to me as I think that uh, uh, in a way I can simplify saying that our minds are powerful, but our hands are limited somehow. So algorithmic design enables us to, um, let's say, reaching the level of complexity 
which is in our minds and overcoming uh, the mouse clicking uh, um, logic that we every time every day like you know, uh, we, we experience and also you know the kind of mind funnel that we have in the daily routine uh, basically if you are involved in uh, creating shapes and objects through the computer so mastering algorithm in a way is a um, is a way to unleash creativity and to explore novel solution for uh, our design so today i want to start in a um, probably not traditional way like starting with a book uh, which is a well known is uh, towards an architecture by by le corbusier actually i ran into this book recently and i of course i read it when i was a student and uh, as you probably know that um, um the, the three of the most influential actually chapters are um collected under the name uh, Desier que ne voyant pas. That sorry, beg your pardon for my fancy, but basically it does mean that uh, eyes which do not see. Now, if you know this book, um, which was of course very influential in the history of architecture, boats, airplanes, uh, automobiles uh, are shown as the expression of the, let's say, the powerful beauty uh, of practical form, like uh, they are honest, simple functional and technological in the, in the same way so as you can see uh, le corbusier tries to do this kind of relationship and contrast uh, between buildings and cars uh, buildings and boats like in the example that we can see right now so in a way uh, those pages uh, reminds us that form is like not only derived from uh, uh, precise typological uh, choices but also uh, they can be the direct expression of uh, the spirit of time. So this is something that we have to do in a way also today. Uh, and today we can borrow this sentence, uh, uh, eyes which do not see, uh, as I think that design and architecture, in my uh, humble opinion, they are not completely uh, aware of the profound connections between uh, uh, the design itself and the potential coming from the liquid world of uh, uh, information technology, apps, uh, digital services in general, and uh, smart objects. Um, it's important to say anyway that when we think about technology, when we think about smart objects and so on, I don't basically refer to something like the thing that you can see right now on the screen. So we are not talking about uh, uh, smart object like uh, uh, light bulb, RGB light bulb that you can control with your phone, with your with, with apps and something like that. This is a, in a way is a very, uh, we can say it's a very shallow and, and superficial way to, under, to, to um, read this kind of phenomenon that we have today, but actually, uh, with a kind of funny uh, slides, uh, I think that like uh, information technology in general and digital services, they are really changing our habits. And uh, I don't know if you know uh, that there is a kind of condition which is called tech neck wrinkles. There is also a kind of, uh, you know, surgery about that. Uh, this is a funny thing to say that uh, smartphones and uh, digital services, once again, they are really affecting our life in uh, many ways and in a very profound way. And it, I think it's not possible um, that this won't change the way we design things. But once again, it's not only about uh, connecting a bulb to the smartphone or to the Wi-Fi in order to control it when we are outside and we, we want to change the lights it's something more profound and more important to say. Um, I'm showing like four slides, four images, four icons actually about four services that we are, that guys are using, people are using today. Uh, I, I put like Amazon Prime, if you want to buy something today and you want to uh, get it right here, right now, in a way the subtitle of, of, Am of Amazon Prime could be something like that. You want something and we can get it right now. Or Uber, which is also a way for, if you think about it uh, and you think about how uh, millennials uh, 
uh, like think about ownership, for example. Uh, there is a recent study that says that uh, millennials, they don't want to buy a car. They don't want to own a car. So it's also a way to uh, to say that ownership is changing. Or Deliveroo, for example, which is a service that we, in a way, experience also in this kind of uh, lockdown period. And uh, we have some kind of keyword coming from, from that. So ownership, once again, uh, but also data, because all those apps uh, are based on data. And also, uh, there is a kind of uh, liquefaction. They are liquefying reality. And also, we can uh, you know, overcome taboos, in a way, because we can also find uh, uh, you know, partner and people online with uh, apps like Tinder, for example, or other. They are changing changing in a way the uh, they are changing how we think everything and, and we are also overcoming mediation this is something very important to say because one of the uh, sign of the common thread of this kind of new um, approach new this change of habits is is that we are overcoming all no possible mediation that we have uh, in our life now um, I use the bulb example as a kind of thing to uh, remove, to get rid of. And uh, I'm showing this project uh, as the opposite, as a um, kind of good example of what is going to happen uh, in, uh, in the next future in the world of design. This is a shoe designed and, and manufactured by Adidas, which is called the Future Craft 4D. And basically is a, um, it's a project where Adidas created the, the tooling, the outsole, in um, using uh, according to the 3D printing technology and um, using the, a knitting numerical control, a CNC knitting machine, in order to create the upper. Now, this is it, it looks like a shoe, like a, an extreme uh, um, design shoe, but actually there is something more behind it because there is something very similar to Amazon Prime in a way to the, the idea of overcoming mediation because, for example, the outsole, which is 3D printed, in the next future can be customized by the user and you can have it right here right now once again you can go on the website you can change you will probably change um, according to your data so data is once again the second important keyword of this topic and having something immediately so you remove all the mediation and uh, the object is printed in a few right now in a few minutes probably in the future will be uh, created in a few seconds and you can get it on your home at your home when you are in a, in a very uh, you know once again in a fast way like removing all the steps that usually we have in order to buy something but there is there are a lot of consequences in terms in terms of design first of all the technology itself is something that looks like a science fiction movie and it's not just a fetishism but actually it's interesting to see uh, how an object which in general is created according to the same paradigm is created in a new is manufactured in a completely new way this is a is the, it's called the carbon 3d um, uh, printer that right now uh, currently um, allows to uh, create the object to manufacture the object in a few minutes but there are also we have a lot of consequences in terms of data managing because the shoe is created uh, in order to improve performances uh, using data coming from athletes from uh, but also in the future from customers for example and everything is simplified is managed by powerful algorithm that in a way they generate the design so the final shape is not uh, sketched is not just created with an a priori system and logic but with a, once again by an algorithm that automatically in a way generates the final shape so the use of, of data is critical in this kind of new paradigm but also in terms of material use um, as you can see here everything is created according to a topological optimization which is a kind of topic 
that you can see today in uh, many um, like uh, not only engineering design but in a um, also in fashion uh, and in automotive for example uh, I'm just showing you a kind of um, a couple of examples where once again the shape in order to uh, improve the use of material in order to remove redundancy and with this kind of aim of optimization uh, this is a project that we have done uh, um, 10 years ago more or less was one of the first approach in a kind of uh, algorithmic design uh, like mixed with fashion and with the idea of optimize a shape through um, this kind of uh, fluid uh, uh, material uh, which solidifies in order to um, having a kind of reference which is a traditional shoe but with a new kind of logic or this is another project where uh, once again the idea of like creating a bottle which was protecting the glass part and this kind of skeleton uh, which is made in uh, this is a project that we done in collaboration with uh, the, the British designer Ross Lovegro and uh, uh, here the bottle which is the fragile element is like protected by this uh, um, uh, skeleton in t titanium this is 3d printed titanium so we um, try to remove all the material that was redundant for the construction itself um, and, and as you can see also we are going in, according to this kind of new shift uh, design shift something uh, what we get is similar to the object that uh, nature creates in a way because nature always tries to uh, simplifies to find the minimal path to reduce uh, complexity to solve complexity in a way also if the final shape looks like a complex object we are actually uh, like solving complexity and not only representing it with our shape another uh, important topic another important like word that we use is data and data is the main fuel of the current and, and future design and i want to talk about data using a, a, um, a kind of memory that i have since I, wa I was a kid for example uh, this is a computer coming from the from the 80s and at that time one of the basically we use computer like that uh, for video games but something that was really tricky but challenging and interesting at the same time was to create uh, uh, shapes and drawings and at the time you just had a kind of uh, um, square um, uh, pixel based uh, it was about 50 by 25 uh, pixels so something really ridiculous if you think about the resolution that we have today in our screens and so basically um, if you wanted to create an object or like a drawing like a man uh, like the, the thing that you are seeing right now you should have to take note about uh, every pixel label position for example as you can see here we are like 99 170 135 and so on and so you could like communicate this kind of uh, um, set of data in order to create a, a, a drawing for example so an image could be uh, translated into a set of number at that time uh, with um, friends of mine we, we were doing a, a play basically by phone uh, at, that, at that time we have something like that so really analogic and so this kind of play was like communicating that string of number to our friends and, and, and they were putting those numbers into their computer and something popped up in their screen now that that game uh, was like uh, completely naive at that time you, you can see also uh, um, uh, this is a document from the 80s and um, I, I want to make sure that I was a normal normal kid despite the, the thing that you are seeing in the in the screen right now but basically it, it's very funny that also 30 years later I I am still doing this kind of play and the importance of data is not only um, in you know collecting things like in the in the adidas example in order to use data that come from the experience for example but also if you want to create an object 
from the no, from the original idea to the final product. This is a furniture that we made uh, uh, in 2017, and it's a furniture. Uh, actually, I called it a sculpture, which is a word that mixes. Uh, the idea of sculpture with the idea of furniture, of course, and it's called Sistema Fessura. And uh, actually, we sketched this object before. This is uh, the final product. This is not a render, it's the real object. It was basically created with an algorithm that created a set of data. So once again, this is very similar to the thing that we were doing when uh, when we were kids, in a way. So like uh, liquefying reality, liquefying an idea into a set of data, and like fueling, uh, like like sending data to a manufacturer in this case, without using an uh, uh, analog like phone, but with a novel system. And so the final product was like manufacture directly from data. So when you say data to manufacturing without any kind of mediation once again. So um, I never went to the facility. I, from the original sketch that I'm going to show you uh, in, a, in a while, we immediately got the final shape because, uh, and without any blueprint, without any drawing from the original idea through an algorithm that was of course controlled by us to the final um, project, to the final product actually, as you can see on the screen. But it's very important to see, to say, that everything is always created by our, our mind. The algorithms, they don't generate nothing, anything that is not controlled and imagined by our imagination. So Sistema Fessur, for example, uh, has a lot of references. For example, we started from the um, the, 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 the painting, uh, the, the cat uh, of um, uh, Lucio Fontana, Concetto Spaziale, for example, and we try to uh, get to, to take this reference and, and translating it into a three-dimensional object. So it's always important to uh, use also and always the word culture or if you like design culture when we do something new. So it's not only about, uh, uh, you know, aseptic and, uh, and, and empty data, but it's always about mixing together um, references design culture, advanced technology. And this is the final shape. Or, for example, with uh, another project that we um, presented in the Salone del Mobile in 2018, which is called um, Oyster Chair. In this case, for example, we try to uh, do something new in the way an object is like actually created. You know, there are thousands of chair, of iconic chair, but we try to do something different in um, in the way a chair is designed. Actually, the idea was to use virtual reality in order to um, sketch the, the 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 idea. This is the final product that you can see. Actually, is a is a bench that was used for, for by a piano player, as you can see right now, and it also reminds to a string to a note, for example. But the main idea was creating this shape using virtual reality. So um, and a novel technique that usually is uh, um, used in video games or for to visualize, to display uh, ideas, we changed the paradigm and we created from scratch the object. And it was unbelievably uh, amazing to, uh, to create the object using this kind of new technique. Because in general, if you think about it, uh, when we create something in the computer, we are stuck in front of the screen. In this case, you can go around the shape. You can uh, also, in a way, you can really understand the proportion and was absolutely unbelievable how uh, different is the way you create objects uh, when you have a new kind of perspective. So in this case, the, the all, also in this case, the final object was completely liquid. There was a set of liquid data, and we uh, had the opportunity and the possibility to uh, send those data to a manufacturer that created from scratch and without, once again, any kind of... Uh, um, you know, blueprints or, or drawing the final, um, the final shape.
but there are always references also in this case also uh, as i mentioned before we are always talking about design culture so in this case as you can see there is a kind of evolution of uh, this is a kind of uh, bedroom um, bench uh, from 19th century to art deco to a kind of futuristic or if you like contemporary uh, object designed and manufactured with new techniques and according to the same uh, you know, vision and idea. We rarely presented this uh, concept to um, Volkswagen. We were invited by Volkswagen to present um, this uh, concept car uh, in an event which is called New Technologies for Car Design. And uh, also in this case, we tried to create something sympathetic, a sympathetic design. So a uh, car which is um, um, an object for a possible future so we didn't try to do something super futuristic or something uh, you know didn't look like a car but something um, for a, a design for a possible future but we uh, imagine uh, a car not like a set of uh, surfaces but a kind like a set of interfaces so for example, the, 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 um, the roof can become a way to display information. So you can display uh, the music beat, for example, or you can display the amount of uh, uh, CO2 that you are in, the, or air pollution, for example. In a way, a car can become a, a new screen, a, a new interface in order to uh, communicate uh, information. And once again, we use uh, virtual reality and um, video games uh, engine in order to model the final shape in order to um, do a kind of renderization and visualization of the objects one of the uh, in the brief we had uh, a main rule that was basically just five days of modeling and that was possible by using uh, uh, algorithms and uh, but in a virtual uh, world as you can see in the screen so according to a uh, platform which is called Mindesk VR we created everything from scratch uh, using like uh, um, virtual reality helmets and, and uh, joysticks and everything was created in only five days there is also something interesting to say that we used uh, um, an engine a renderization ren um, engine uh, which comes from video game from the video game world in order to have a realistic look and a realistic material simulation and that once again was unbelievably uh, in, like was uh, incredible in order to have a kind of real experience of the uh, final shape in real time but once again everything starts from an idea everything starts from this kind of balance between uh, uh, you know low tech and high tech uh, but everything starts from the idea and from a sketch this is in my of course in my humble um, opinion and uh, i mentioned before it's always important to to create something for possible futures uh, this is a project is another uh, car project that we already done this is a, a real car um, uh, that we designed for a chinese company in this case everything was created um, according to a main idea that was a simplification of components so this car only has 51 uh, parts in the body and uh, most of them are created according to the um, using 3d printing technology the car is uh, almost in uh, you know um, it, it's uh, already outside you so you um, you can you will be able to buy it if you want in a few uh, months and that's incredible that um, once again we created everything in a few weeks um, according to novel technologies uh, and uh, um, in order to create something for a possible future once again but data can be uh, used also for not only for express technology and uh, like an icon but also in order to stimulate senses in order to explain something that is immaterial for example this is a collaboration with an office which is called None Design this project is called Metaball 
Um, actually, the idea was to um, uh, express the idea of equilibrium. Uh, this, this project is like a sculpture for a justice court. And as you can see here, we have a kind of uh, super complex surface and uh, two light spots that reflects the light on top of the surface. And so, as you can see here, you have this kind of uh, uh, crazy effect, uh, which is not uh, um, absolutely not even. But when the two spots, they reach a kind of equilibrium, as you can see here, the reflection on top of the wall is a, a perfect circle. So the use of data, the use of technology, the use of, uh, in this case, also uh, of complex uh, modeling software in order to express a kind of uh, invisible quality like equilibrium. So I'm, I'm showing that because uh, the, the, the technology is always a goal to me and uh, the, the final aim, the final goal is always the beauty. I know that beauty is a kind of ghost word. It's not possible to define it. When you try to define the word beauty, it disappears, but basically it's a, is something which is connected with the idea of uh, equilibrium, simplicity, and also with the, the aim of expressing also feeling. And coming back from the uh, coming back to the uh, the, the digital bulb, the, the the smart bulb, it's always important to say that we don't have just to connect our object to the internet. You are not creating smart objects just by connecting a tool to your Wi-Fi, but it's something more profound. It's something that should, in a way, embrace all our senses. Or, for example, this is a project that we uh, made uh, once again for Ross Lovegrove. It's a collaboration. Uh, so coming back to the, the idea of footwear design, but in a completely different way, um, we use data in this case by anthropological, so uh, I mean uh, anthropometric data, uh, but also we try to create a kind of simulation, which is basically a um, um, gravity effect and a magnetic effect uh, simulation using a kind of uh, hair simulation, as we defined it at the time, uh, in order to create a completely um, novel idea of shoe, or a female shoe, is a kind of uh, high heel boot. And uh, just starting from a set of uh, linear wires, we called it hair. And so by this kind of attraction and with uh, further development, uh, we created an object, once again, removing every kind of redundant material, also this kind of net that you can see here inside comes from uh, this kind of stretching uh, behavior and uh, everything was created through an algorithm. Once again, algorithms are a way to improve our the possibility to express ourselves. So it's not only uh, about the computer, but actually it's a way to overcome our the limitation that, that we have when we want to translate our ideas. And as I mentioned before, our minds uh, are uh, powerful and our hands are limited sometimes. But also a project like this, which is called the Cloud Bridge, this is a concept uh, which starts from the idea that a connection, so also an idea of space, a connection between A and B, uh, and basically for a bridge, can basically cannot be just linear. Actually, the subtitle of this project was the line is the most boring path between two points. So the idea was to uh, create a non-linear path between two points. And once again, an algorithm calculates a kind of lattice network that balances the uh, asymmetric loads coming from the non-linear path. And uh, this final shape, which looks like a cloud, of course, is uh, once again, is an unoptimized structure in order to potentially create every kind of path between A and B. So as you can see here, we defined, for example, just by creating a red path. Uh, and so the algorithm automatically generated uh, the final shape. So it's important to say there are suggestions, there are references, there is a message behind, 
but the computer and the idea of um, like controlling everything through algorithms allowed us to create something which was impossible to conceive without this kind of logic. As you can see here, everything is created in a very free way. So we have this kind of clouds, but everything is controlled in a uh, in a deep way with uh, like FEM analysis software. So when you create the shape, you have an automatic um, response from the computer that give, that basically says you if you are in the right or wrong direction in terms of you know deformation or stress analysis and so on. This kind of logic can be applied to a bridge, but can be applied on as you can see on shoes, on 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 structures, on furniture or whatever. And um, something more in order to um, complete this kind of uh, path. Uh, we were talking about change of habit. We talk about uh, data, about, um, in a way, reality liquefying liquefi liquefi in, in, in a positive way. Um, but there is so also something very important today, which is this kind of, uh, we can say, this kind of shift from mechanical to collective intelligence. Coming back to the, the 80s computer, to the Commodore 64, I remember when I was a kid that uh, the teacher give me this kind of um, essays to say, to, to, to do with, which was, you know, a rainy day in winter. I think that everyone does similar. And I remember that I, the first thing to do in order to not waste my time in writing the, the essay was to um, uh, writing a rainy day in winter on my computer. That of course was not com connected to the internet. So I didn't get any kind of solution. Today you can do it. Today if you write a rainy day in winter, you will get a lot of uh, text uh, about that and you will probably use it. Uh, this is important to say why, because actually uh, you can do something like that today, not because the computers are more powerful, but because there is the internet and because we are putting text on the internet. So we can rely on a kind of um, um, collective intelligence. So it's not only about uh, the power of computers, the power of tools, once again, but we can get benefits from uh, this kind of collective uh, network that in a way will improve the design, will improve the feedback from clients, will improve the feedback from other designers, from, for example. And um, it, there is nothing to be afraid of. Uh, so the image that you can see is like uh, in order to, uh, because I, I really am really am not afraid about that. And uh, is not a Moloch, is not a, a monster, the AI, the artificial intelligence, but actually I try to explain it with the, 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 the teaching assignment and the, 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 the rainy day in winter. Actually, today we can solve problems, we can find solutions, stay together. So to me, AI is something like this. And, uh, and there are a lot of like, uh, positive things about it. And uh, I want to end with this uh, image. As you can see, it, it comes from uh, the movie uh, Wally. And so you have Wally on the right side and Eve on the left side. Uh, they are two robots, actually. But to me, they look like uh, two com completely different era of design, in a way. So on the right side, you can see the mechanical, once again, uh, uh, the mechanical intelligence. So you can see every kind of, uh, you can see the mechanisms, uh, you can see the details. And on the left side, you have this kind of new frontier with, where everything is like immaterial or almost. And you have this kind of set of interfaces. When I was talking about the car, I said that the car was a set, in, in my idea, was a kind of set of interfaces. And you know, interfaces are something simple because people, they have to use it. And um, I, I really am confident that the, the, the future of design is about simplicity, is about feelings, is about emotions. And the computer is a way to express those emotions we don't have we don't have to use the um, algorithmic tool just to express uh, the complexity in a you know like in a fetishism uh, like way but once again our goal is to create something useful simple and feelings and uh, also references 
design culture should be put inside it. So thank you so much for the attention. Um, I can come back to the to the video. I don't know if Mark is still there. Sam, well, thank you very much, uh, Arturo. Um, very impressive body of work and uh, a very clear way of explaining some very complex things uh, within the work and also what's happening uh, in our profession and with technology. Uh, what I'd like to do, if uh, if it's okay with you, is open up uh, to some questions from from our guests. And, Absolutely and, fine. Uh, people will be able to do that uh, through our chat, and uh, please don't be shy. And we'll we'll try to have Arturo share some more of his ideas and and, and respond to some questions uh, while people are formulating uh, some questions. Maybe I I can. Uh, Ask a couple myself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, at different points, you talked about um, the generation of form or the projects themselves, almost as if um, the algor algorithms were producing the form. Um, first, qu there's two part question. Okay, what's the relationship between the, the forms, the algorithms, and design intention. Uh, yeah. Where, where, does, where, is, where is the act of design within your process? Yeah. For example, I showed you the uh, cloud bridge, which is, I think, the best example to, to answer your question. Uh, maybe if I say to you, let's imagine a cloud made by thousands uh, of uh, steel elements uh, from A to B. Your mind can imagine it. If you have to translate that thing into a physical object, you cannot do it, or you will spend uh, an entire life in doing it. So through the algorithms, algorithm basically, the word algorithm is, conne is strictly connected to the computer, but it, it's wrong, actually, because the algorithmic thinking is the way the brain works, which is simplifying com you know, a complex problem into a set of simple tasks. So you imagine something which comes from the experience, from your design culture, in, which comes from uh, the problem resolution. And the computer, the algorithm in this case, just speeds up and allows you to create something which is in your mind. Of course, it's a language. You need to learn it. But basically, the main idea is like, our mind is powerful, our hands are limited. So algorithms, they are this kind of bridge between uh, our imagination and physical objects. Of course, it's a language. You need to learn it. If you don't control it, it controls you. So you know, one of the main criticism is like, algorithmic design produces always the same thing, that the, sometimes you cannot control it. But if you know the language, you are you will be able to really translate your ideas into physical objects. I hope I answered your question. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It was very clear. Um, before we go to to the questions from the guests, let me just ask one more. Um, part of the title of uh, the the lecture this evening was uh, "New Paradigm," and I think you touched on that very clearly uh, and succinctly when uh, you talked about the uh, removing or overcoming mediation, where yeah. uh, the, uh, with the example of your project where, okay, it goes from the digital, digital modeling and design into the factory. Um, is, this, um, is this something, I mean, this is, this, actually it has something to do with also about, going back to my first question about the form as well, because, uh, if we think about uh, industrial production before the digital realm, uh, the shapes were more or less controlled by the processes of industrial production. Where do you see the limitations now? Are there are there the same limitations with that we saw in the 20th century? What is the limitations with this new paradigm? Well, this is a very complex one to answer, actually. <laughs> um, 
I think that we just started to see the possibilities. Uh, so I uh, probably you will be disappointed, but I cannot give you a, a precise answer right now. As I mentioned before, and I also showed a project which is the Future Craft. That is a kind of uh, time machine because uh, we cannot do it right now. What I said, I mean, you cannot completely do a customized project in on uh, you know on a platform. You cannot have the shoe in two minutes right now. So it's just a kind of, of time machine. But basically, I think that there are a lot of benefits from this kind of reduction of uh, you know of this process because in terms of uh, once again of ecology of uh, material reduction, for example, um, but I can not really answer because I know and I can see, um, for example, I have a daily uh, con connection and, and communication with, uh, with companies. There are new technologies that they, they will really improve uh, and not only shorten the path between, you know, idea and the object in our hands, but uh, they will also... Uh, improve the entire life cycle of project, the, of product actually, but also the production chain itself. Uh, we are only at the beginning of a new change, but for example, it's very interesting when I see students that they have maybe, you know, 19 or 20 years, and I really experience people that they can really control this kind of uh, design to manufacturing in a few hours, for example. So I I don't know what is going to happen, but I'm very confident that something incredibly interesting. Also because you know it's merged with the idea, the ideas I was like uh, talking about, which is uh, this new concept of ownership. I, I'm really interested in like uh, how millennials uh, and next ge next generation they will think because sometimes we start with the same. Um, uh, you know, background, but actually they don't like uh, to buy things. They are not buying any more uh, houses, for example. There is a question on, on the chat, for example. I'm, I'm just connecting with that, for example, which is, uh, do you have any suggestion to combine technology with interiors? Yes. The, for example, interior is a new, is a new field. Uh, and the pandemic, like lockdown, uh, taught us that we need to improve the way the layout of our houses we need to improve uh and it's not only about buying a new desk you know <laughs> with uh, or to create uh, just a, a, a comfy room in our house but probably the entire equilibrium of uh, working space uh, and private space will change so the algorithms for example they will be useful in order to I don't know, maybe they can calculate the data, can be useful for under, in order to understand how much time we spend in a private area, how much time we spend in the working area, and how to balance them. And uh, something which is interesting is like the output probably is unpredictable because it's a kind of bottom-up procedure. We don't start with an a priori idea. We don't start with something which is already, already freeze in our minds. But you create a process, and this process can lead to something that you really didn't predict before. So um, there, there is a lot, of to, a lot to do in, in, in interior, for example. And once again, it's not only about putting, uh, connecting uh, light to the internet. Is the is a way to uh, I think that the perspective is like really changing the way we create the layouts, for example. And you mentioned that part of that can be also the collection of data. Of data, yeah, of course, collection and of data. Analysis, and that becomes an analysis, uh, absolutely, process. absolutely, because data are not only you know in general we think about uh, you know we consider data only the thing that are captured by the phone you know there are a lot of criticism about that or from smart uh, speaker or something like that data is uh, also they are also about immaterial thing there are for example we actually stay i don't know 6 hours in front of a computer but we are really working 2 hours and so Basically, we can, uh, with big data, we can really analyze uh, maybe 
that we are more efficient from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and from uh, 11 to 12 we are not working at all and so basically that moment is a moment for doing something else so we can define spaces and, de and devices in order to in a way to understand us and uh, so there is a lot to do okay very good thank you um, Luca has a question uh, asking for suggestions on uh, useful books that you could re recommend about artificial intelligence uh, and interaction I presume he means interaction between design and artificial intelligence uh, well I think I, probably, um, yeah. we, we, we could plug it we could we could do a publicity for some of your books as well here well uh, okay my book my book is actually i i didn't want to I actually i did it in uh, as a second slide so i really i did the, the marketing part well my book is just about algorithms uh, not about ai and uh, i'm very bad with titles and names so i'm really not able to uh, to to give you titles but uh, uh, i want to give you a, a general suggestion actually i mean to students and to people that are following us is uh, um, I, I mentioned the word design culture so you cannot uh, create uh, the future if you don't know the past it's not possible to uh, manage uh, artificial intelligence uh, if you don't know how to do a uh, code in Python for example you cannot do super complex shapes if you never did a 3d model so um, sometimes I can see in students this kind of hunger, which is amazing, which is absolutely good. But it's also important to understand that knowledge is a stair. So you need to do step by step. It's important to, uh, and it's also a broad stair in a way. I mean, you can, you don't have just to play with the technological, you know, side of the thing, but you always have to merge technology with culture and culture means uh, you need to uh, have a precise idea of uh, where we are going toward you need to understand um, what design culture is you need to understand if you are working in automotive for example transportation design today it's something absolutely um, interesting for the change that is going to happen but you cannot design a car if you don't know the history of car design for example so my general suggestion is, OK, you can go deep into AI and everything, but you need to, clear, to have a clear idea of the learning path from zero to hero, I say. Uh, I, I cannot recommend like specific books because I don't remember the titles. But okay. the, my general suggestion, my general suggestion is to be very like uh, uh, to have a never forget that everything is a, is a learning path. Okay, very good. Um, let me dig down a bit uh, to a question that tied into what you were just saying by Lewis, uh, who, who asks, uh, how can architects or designers start learning and thinking in this new language of algorithms and to begin to translate it to design? Uh, what's the methodology of approaching and learning it? A uh, very interesting question. Actually, uh, forgetting about the computer. I know it's, it looks like a contradiction. Forgetting about the computer. You, because once again, our mind uh, is the main uh, driver. We can really generate, you, you, you don't generate complex things if you cannot imagine them in a way. If you cannot imagine the process at, uh, in a way. So forgetting the computer because we are you know like son of the drawing board in a way so we always think about creating object like a collection of, of shapes of surfaces connected together so we usually think about the process and the process sometimes uh gives us limitations so it's very important to forget about the computer in order to invent new things in order to think in an algorithmic way and of course in parallel you need to master the language so algorithmic design is not super complex uh, i think that uh, um, algorithmic thinking is the answer so it's not about algorithmic tools you need to understand that you need to create algorithms for everything but actually we every every time we solve algorithms so the people that are, are following us right now and they are writing questions basically they open the computer they like 
did a kind of a, um, you know process in order to be uh, with us today but when you go at work you uh, go outside your house you take the bus every time you solve algorithms and we do it our brain do it algorithm in in a super fast way you are we have to translate everything in uh, also design should be translated in this uh, kind of new language uh, in general we have this kind of top-down approach so we already have an idea and we develop the idea so there are there is no space for the algorithmic thinking if you already have an idea and you just develop it into pieces so it's you have to like overlap you have to flip the the, the, the process and you have to create this kind of um, you know of uh, path of questions and uh, possible alternatives in order to find the right solution and the, the final object, both in architecture or design or product or automotive and so on. So it becomes almost as if it's a different design process. It's absolutely different. It is like it's completely flipped because, uh, uh, because once again, in general, you start with a very precise idea when you, and it comes also from the tool itself, which is the drawing. Because drawing is a limit, is a, you know, you cannot draw everything. If you want to draw, once again, the cloud bridge, you cannot do it. And so sometimes, since the tool and the platform is limited, you limit your ideas and you're, you, you have this kind of funnel because you are afraid, you don't, you don't know how to explore your idea, you just give up. So that's why it's important to have this kind of uh, new flipped process that basically is a way for reaching what is in your mind okay very interesting uh nuka has a question referring to um, she thanks you for sharing the beautiful projects and has a question about the Thank project you. of uh light spreading on the wall um, yeah uh, she's interested in how the idea where it came from uh let's see is the thing you should see to know you should have an idea how it plays to to how it does it work to play with it afterwards um i'm trying to understand the see. i mean this is the thing you should see to know you should have an idea of how does it work to play with it after uh so maybe if we can talk a little bit more but i'm having some hard time uh, deciphering the question a bit maybe yeah 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 yeah. About... yeah yeah the reflection on the wall yeah um well th that's an example of um with technology you can express the intangible you can express something which is not visible so how to uh express the idea of equilibrium with technology for example also in a way like showing the potential of technology because you know you can just project a circle but it's not the same thing so you have this kind of uh, light which rotates and when it's in equilibrium the reflection on a super complex shape reflects the 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 the, 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 the perfect uh, geometry so the idea is like uh, for us was uh, and for the we, we that was a um to be precise was a consulting uh, there, there was also a a team of artists be behind it was uh, um, in a kind of renaissance way using geometry and technology in order to express the idea of simplicity and equilibrium it's also in a justice uh, palace uh, tribunale in a, a court uh, in a like justice court and so the idea was to express the equilibrium of laws uh so once again design culture ideas references and not only cold and empty technology okay very good thank you i hope that answers your question nuka uh let's see we can go down to uh, daniel can you please uh, let's we might put you on a spot here there's some there's some uh, there's some um there's some uh, discussions of revolving around this. Daniel yeah. asks, um, can you define the difference between parametric design, computational design, and generative? Uh, we need like 10 hours, but I'll try to do it in 20 seconds. Computational design is a kind of umbrella definition, which gathers all the others. 
basically computational design means that you design objects using algorithms then this kind of approach gives you the parametric benefit. Parametric means that you can control a global shape by changing just one or two or a few parameters. So I can change an entire building by changing, I don't know, the first floor layout, for example. So parametric means that everything is created through parameters connected together. So everything is like you have association and links between parts. So this is a benefit from the use of algorithms. Finally, generative design is something more complex. It's a process that mimics nature. So everything is created by the idea of growth. So design and objects are not created by connecting things together by creating a process which once again is a bottom-up process so you have a, um, an, an algorithm a procedure that creates the final shape through an idea of growth so that's why the shape is generated by logics for example you can create a chair that uh, uh, is not actually designed but tries to create to, to generate the best shape for in order to uh, in, in terms of structural uh, behavior, for example. So you don't design anything in a traditional way. You just create a process like nature does, you have the final shape. Uh, but it's uh, very impossible to do it. I, I, I spent one minute, but it, it, we, we, we need uh, uh, more time in order to be more like... No, I think that was very, very uh, clear, succinct definition. It's the, it's the century question, this one. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Uh, Florencia uh, asks, thank you, for, thank you for the lecture. Um, and she asks, what about the theory behind this, this new paradigm? Um, where is it where is it aiming what are what are the objectives of this? it's easier to uh, to answer the the aims is like for me is like improving uh, the life quality uh is like is about simplicity despite the complexity of the, of course despite the complexity of the tools and the theory itself and the methodology itself the idea is like solving complexity the idea is like creating uh, uh, to 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 have like uh, a better life. I know probably looks like a commercial, but the the goal is having uh, is like solving problem to have more time for us. Is like to when we were talking about uh, data in order to understand us, in order to understand where we are more efficient, where we are uh, more productive, and having more time for our friends, uh, partners, or families. You know, it's about. Uh, we have a, a super powerful tool that we created. They don't come from aliens, but we created. And so we can use them for improving our life. So the first stage, which is about uh, a formalism, we all know that the first stage of computational design was about creating complex shape. We all know that. But was only a first stage that, you know, is a manierismo, is a, just a first step that was about expressing, you know, we can do this thing. Now we know how to control this complexity. We can do something better and we can really improve our life uh, with technology. And it's important to understand that design and architecture are a part, they are a, a very important part of this paradigm shift. Okay, very good, thank you. The um, Tejisa uh, mm -hmm. has a question, how do designers become relevant and not be replaced by technology in the long run. Um, the, yeah, it, you know, it's the, 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 my uh, last slides about uh, the Ex Machina movie. Because uh, in the worst case, the, 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 the computer gave us, it will give us uh, 100 alternatives, but the human being will choose the, the, the final one. I don't think there will be a fight between uh, human beings and, 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 um, and robots, you know. Um, we control everything because we write the algorithms, we write uh, the codes, uh, we do the final decisions. The computer just accelerates uh, the process and sometimes give, give us solution that we didn't expect, we didn't predict before. So I'm really not afraid about that. The automatic design is something that we don't want, basically. That's it. Okay. Sena has a question. 
uh, to regarding how do you avoid limiting your ideas? Uh, what happen? How do you? What's the ideal way to to avoid um, intellectual design blockage? It's sort of the white paper effect, probably. Yeah, you, you need to train your brain. You need to train your brain and you, uh, for example, sometimes designers, uh, they don't think outside the box, also architects. Uh, you can find references in, mo in movies, you can find references in music, you can find references in, uh, you know, also in apps, once again, I mentioned uh, Uber or, or um, Amazon Prime or whatever you need to understand that everything is connected and not only today but mainly today everything is connected so um, references are everywhere so it's important to not to think just about i have to design a, i don't know a um, teacup and i just think about teacup it's important to know the history of teacups but you can find references everywhere, everywhere because today every, everything is connected. And you need to train your brain in doing that. I uh, cannot do, a, you know, I don't have the magic formula about that. But uh, you need to train your brain in um, uh, mixing things together. But once again, we, need, uh, we, we will need more time for uh, talk okay. about this. All right. Thank you very much. Um, we will leave one more question if anybody wants to yeah. do one last question. Uh, give a couple more seconds. No. Okay. Ar Arturo, thank you very much for your, your, your generous time that you've yeah, dedicated thanks to for us. The, thanks for the invitation. It's, uh, it's great to hear someone talking about technology, talking about it in a humanistic point of view where it's it's not about the technology itself it's about it's about people who are using technology and, and i think um, that's an important th message that's come out through through your talk this evening uh, and also and, and also you've given us a glimpse into into your into your world of computational design parametric design and i think um, i see that a lot of a lot of our students have participated this evening and so I think this has uh, been really great um, to share with them and hopefully they take some inspiration from your approach. Thank you so much once again it was great and uh, thanks for your, the invitation I really enjoy the time with you I hope that uh, people the attendees liked it and um, once again uh, thank you so much. Okay thank you again we hope to see you at school soon. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Uh, bye. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming.